This tutorial will be in two parts and is a beginner level tutorial. In part one, I'll show you how to use the layer shader, and in part two, I'll show you how to use images and layer RGBA to make more complex textures. Here I have a basic scene set up with a camera, a studio object, and a cube. For my lighting, I have a sky dome light with an HDRI image and a quad light light in my scene. Let's go ahead and create a standard surface. We'll add that to our cube. And since it is a cube, I'll choose a projection method of cubic. Double click and open up the network editor. So now select your, so now select your standard surface and choose a color. I'm gonna choose a blue. Right mouse click and we'll rename that and call it blue. I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer shader. Take the output and we'll connect that to our Arnold Beauty. And take our blue standard surface output and we're gonna connect that into our layer one input. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new standard surface. This time I'm gonna choose a red color. Go ahead and rename that. and take the output from our red standard surface. And this time I'm gonna put that to the layer two input. And go ahead and click render, and you should have a red cube. If you're new to working with layers, I have an animation here that better explains what's going on. We have our two nodes with two colors, red and blue. What the layer shader does is it takes the topmost layer and stacks it on top of the layer underneath. So when we rendered and only saw a red cube, this makes sense, since the red colored node is lying on top of the blue colored node. This is where the layers mix value comes into play. If you've used programs like Photoshop, the mix here will work similar to adjusting the opacity of a layer. You can see as we drag the mix value closer to a value of zero, more of the blue color begins to come through and we no longer see layer two. What makes the layer share great for creating materials is the mix doesn't have to be a percent. We can attach any black and white image or noise to control the shader's mix value. I'm gonna go ahead and add a checkerboard. And we'll drag the output of the checkerboard to our Arnold Beauty. I'm gonna change my U frequency to two and the V frequency to two and go ahead and click render. The reason I did this is to see where the black and white values are mapped on our cube. Now go ahead and reconnect our layer shader back to our Arnold Beauty. And this time I'm gonna take the checkerboard output and I'm gonna put that to our layer two mix. And go ahead and click render. If we compare the two images, we have a better idea of how the black and white image affects the mix. We know that layer two or the topmost layer is red and the bottom layer or layer one is blue. We now see that when we attach a black and white image that the color black allows the underlying layer to come through while a white color hides the layer underneath. Here I have an animation to illustrate this principle. Let's assume instead of a checkerboard, I had a perfectly white image connected to a layer 2 mix. As I change the white value and get closer to black, we see the different grayscale values work just like adjusting the mix percent, allowing more of the second layer to come through depending on the value. So now knowing that the grayscale value controls the mix, we can attach any black and white noise or image to achieve a variety of results. Now I'll show you how to make a little more advanced texture using the layer RGBA. I have a scene here with a platonic with a bevel deformer attached to round the corners and the same lighting setup as the last example. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new standard surface. We'll add that to our platonic. Set our projection method to cubic. And open up the network editor. And I'm gonna make a green color. And this time I'm gonna use a coat. Turn that up to one. Go ahead and rename this. Call it green. And I'll create a new standard service. And I'm gonna choose a metal. And under my presets, I'm gonna choose iron. We'll rename this. And just like the previous example, I add a layer shader. Connect the output to Arnold Beauty. And our 
crow material will be our layer one input and the green will be our layer two input. And if you click render, you'll see we just have a green platonic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wanna add my images. So go ahead and type it image, add an image node. This is gunmetal. Go ahead and rename that. I'll adjust this so I can read them. Add another image. And I'm going to add this smudge. And we'll add a third image. If you look at my three images, you'll notice that two of them have a black background and the smudges image has a white background. So I want them to all be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and invert that. Drag our smudges output to our main input. And if we look here, now it's changed it to a black background. So now all three images now have a black background. So with the previous example, we used the checkerboard to attach to our mix to blend our two shaders. We'll now combine these three images using the layer RGBA. So come over here, type layer, and this time we're going to use layer RGBA. Layer RGBA is similar to the layer shader, but gives us a little more control for blending. Layer RGBA differs by giving us the operation field. If you're familiar with Photoshop, the operation field works just like blend modes. Now I'm going to go ahead and add these three images to the layer RGBA. So I'm going to grab the gunmetal output. I'll make this my layer one input. Next, I'll grab the scratches. We'll make that layer two. And come from the complement output and make that layer three. So if you're not familiar with blend modes, it works by using these confusing calculations and blending the images together based on that calculations. To keep things simple, because this is too much math for me, the easy answer is to start with two images and scroll through the blend modes and see how it combines your two images and gives you a result you're happy with, and then begin adding additional layers as needed. But for this tutorial, I know that a screen blend mode will take the bright areas and begin combining just the bright values with the bottommost layer, in our case, layer one gunmetal. If you go ahead and click render, you'll notice the only thing we see is the topmost layer smudges. At this point, I should mention why I'm showing you in stages how the render should look. If for some reason when you're adding images to your model and things don't look right, it may be your projection method, the scale, or maybe the rotation of the texture. I have two renders, one with a cubic projection and one in spherical, and you can see what a huge difference those two projection methods make. Also adjusting length U and length V or offset will dramatically change your projection as well. So a good practice is to enable the IPR, click use texture mode, and notice in the window the cube around our object. This is how our projection is currently positioned. If I change to spherical, it'll change to a sphere. You can also use transform, rotation, and move tool to get the placement or scale just right. So I'm happy with the way the projection looks. So I know I want to combine all the bright areas from layer three and layer two with layer one. So if we click on our layer two and look at our operation, as stated before, I know I need a screen blend mode and I'll do the same for layer three. You can see how this effect is adding the brighter values together with each layer. So next, I'm going to disconnect the output of the layer RGBA, and we're going to connect that into our layer shader, into our layer two mix. And we'll drag that to our Arnold Beauty, and go ahead and click Render. If we look at the results, we have more chrome than paint. Maybe this is the look you want, but I want more paint than chrome, as if the paint had been scratched off. So just like when we inverted our smudges texture, I want to invert the whole layer RGBA. So again, we'll type Invert.
and we'll connect layer RGBA to the main input and we'll output that now back into our layer two mix and go ahead and click render. And now we have more paint than Chrome. I'll show you one more example of using the layer RGBA. So we'll come over here and we'll add another layer RGBA. And I'm going to reuse the gun metal. So I'm going to command click to du duplicate that. And I'm going to use another image. This time I'm going to use this dust image. Go ahead and rename. Connect my dust to my layer one input and my gun metal will be my layer two input. And like we did before, I want to combine them. So I'm going to change my operation of layer two to screen. And instead of connecting to a mix, this time I'm going to go and connect it to the specular roughness. I'm going to use that also on the chrome. And we have a coat on the green standard surface, and I'm going to use it here as well. And go ahead and click render. The great thing about these is we can stack as many layers together as we want to make really complex shaders. And this workflow can be used throughout the texture building process.